guys. I hope your week is going well. I just applied my sunscreen and I'm caffeinating along. Today I'm going to be reviewing, per your request, the Super Goop sunscreens. Um, many of you have asked for this um, and I uh, have been trying some of the products, though not all of them, and I do like many of what they have to offer. So I thought I would go over as much as I can in the Super Goop line of sunscreens. If you're not familiar, Super Goop is a brand um, that's actually based in Texas. The founder is an educator and became motivated to create a line of sunscreens that um, would motivate consumers to use them. <laughs> you can find that um, they have a they have a um, program in which they go into the schools it's called Ounce Per Ounce and they teach kids how to put on sunscreen. So I think that is fantastic. Teaching young children early on is very important because as, as you guys hear me reiterate over and over again, sunscreen application and putting sunscreen on is a behavior and it only works so long as you do it. So, Supergoop offers both mineral and chemical sunscreens. Um, if you're new here, mineral sunscreens are those that contain zinc and or titanium dioxide. They offer uh, very good coverage of both UV UVB rays of ultraviolet light, which are the rays that damage our DNA and our skin cells and are responsible largely for skin cancer formation. Also offer very reasonable protection against UVA. Um, UVA is the light that penetrates very deeply under our skin, ages our skin, contributes to wrinkles, damages the deeper layer of our skin, can suppress our um, skin immune system, and also contribute to skin cancer, um, but more so aging and chronic photoaging and hyperpigmentation, okay? And so the other type of sunscreen that uh, Supergoop also offers are chemical sunscreens. And the primary UVA absorbing filter that is used in the Supergoop sunscreens and in most chemical sunscreens in the United States is avabenzone, okay? <clears throat> avabenzone is a, a respectable um, filter for absorb, ab absorbing excuse me, UVA. However, it is limited by the fact that it is photo, photo lipo, meaning it degrades pretty quickly. And so you really, really, really have to keep reapplying um, chemical sunscreens to make sure that you're getting good coverage for UVA. Take home point though, both mineral sunscreens and chemical sunscreens need to be reapplied. Can, uh, consistently throughout the day. I always say at least three to four times every single day, no matter the weather, no matter if it's pitch black out, that way it's a behavior, it is in place. But if you are outdoors for a prolonged period of time, then you should be reapplying for sure every two hours while you are while you are outdoors. We know from studies that most consumers don't apply sunscreen adequately to ensure an even enough layer to get to the SPF labeled on the on the package. So we always recommend shooting for an SPF somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 50. That way, if you're not so great at putting it on, at least you end up with an SPF somewhere close to 15. All right, so first up, just in the category of face, here is the Unseen Sunscreen. This is really popular. I've heard a lot of YouTubers talk about this. They really love it. They really love the vehicle. They find that it's one of the very few sunscreens that they actually like using <clears throat> and reapplying. So I was interested to see this. Okay, so the Unseen Sunscreen is a chemical sunscreen, meaning it's got avabenzone, homosalate, octinoxate, and octisalate. So avabenzone is what is offering UVA protection. If you're using this sunscreen, do you know that that avabenzone is photo photolabile and you really 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 have to make sure that you're reapplying it consistently throughout the day all right so it is a good it's got good standard chemical filters in it it's offering SPF 40 so if you you know if you're if you're lousy but you are giving it a good college effort and applying it consistently you should be getting somewhere in the ballpark maybe around maybe around 20 if you're really good of an SPF okay um, it's pricey all right you get um, how much do you get here? 50 ml is 32 bucks. That's pretty pricey, okay? <clears throat> Inactive ingredient wise, it looks to be looks to be pretty good. Moisturizing, it, it looks like it's a very moisturizing uh, sunscreen. It has shea butter and jojoba oil. Both are fantastic um, emollients. They're occlusive in that they hold water into the skin, but they're not they're not pore clogging ingredients. Although, like I've said in my videos, I can never predict that 100. percent Some some people's acne will flare with certain things and it's just hard to say for sure. But in general, jojoba oil and um, shea butter in moisturizers <clears throat> 
tends to do well very well. This also contains dimethicone in it, which as I've said in my videos is a fantastic emollient and does not clog pores despite internet, internet claims. Overall, my opinion of this sunscreen is that it is very expensive. It is a standard chemical sunscreen offering SPF 40. However, Given its popularity, I imagine that people like the vehicle, meaning the shea butter and jojoba oil based moisturizer. So if you find that you love putting this sunscreen on and that you are, want to, you actually want to reapply it, then I think it's worth it. However, as far as the, the UV protection that it offers, it doesn't offer anything over a standard drugstore sunscreen. So they also offer a 100% mineral invisible setting powder that is SPF 45. This is a mineral uh, powder-based sunscreen that has both zinc and titanium dioxide. Um, they offer it in the pigments, trans in the tints translucent, light, medium, and deep. And this, um, in addition to containing zinc and titanium dioxide, which are uh, mineral sunscreen ingredients that are offering the SPF 45 and are very good, this product also contains um, the inactive ingredient iron oxide. Iron oxide is a great ingredient for offering protection into the broader wavelengths of visible light. We have now um, begun to understand, contribute to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and melasma. Okay, so if you are somebody suffer who whose acne or inflammation in the skin, heals with a dark mark, having sunscreens that are tinted with iron oxides can offer even more protection against that occurring than just plain sunscreen alone. So that is a fantastic ingredient and is frequently included in a lot of tinted sunscreens, CC creams, BB creams, mineral powders, etc. So I like that. What you need to know, however, about powders is that they do not reliably distribute sunscreen, okay? So um, they're fine as frosting on the cake, but you still need a broad base layer of SPF to your entire face in a lotion or cream form, and you need to reapply that base consistently throughout the day. So where I find um, that setting powders are valuable is that what they do is they allow the consumer to um, dust on a little bit of extra extra um, protection, dust on a little bit of extra protection against visible light. They are a makeup, they can camouflage things, and for consumers who find that sunscreens make them look oily, shiny, or for consumers who choose mineral sunscreens that leave a white cast, I think these setting powders are fantastic in that they can camouflage some of that and make the base layer a little bit more cosmetically um, acceptable to the consumer. So I like them in that regard, but do not be misled that a setting powder or that a and it, that a mineral makeup or a mineral powder or a powder sunscreen is adequate sunscreen. It is not. Um, um, and as far as makeups go, I can never I can never recommend makeups because I'm not a makeup wearer. But I do know that as far as makeups go, people with rosacea seem to report that mineral powders and mineral mineral based cosmetics seem to be less irritating and less troublesome to them. So if you are somebody with rosacea, you may find that you tolerate this as a makeup. Then moving along in the realm of things that are tinted, they also have a daily correct CC cream that is SPF 40. They offer it in the shades fair to light and light to medium. It retails for $32 for how many ounces is that? 47 ml, okay? And um, I can't speak at all about the color or the tint or how the coverage is. I do know that CC creams in general tend to be a little bit more subtle and, uh, you know, kind of just uh, give you a more natural appearance in comparison to a straight up heavy foundation. Overall, this one looks like a good one if you're comfortable with the price point, offering an SPF of 40. And again, the iron oxides for some protection into visible light. It is a mineral-based uh, CC cream with zinc titanium dioxide uh, for UVA and UVB coverage, which is fantastic. And it also um, has some moisturizing ingredients in it. If you are someone who has an allergic contact dermatitis, however, to a methyl isothiazinolone, then you wanna avoid this as it has that in it. That is a preservative, it is more than fine, but contact allergy to that um, can, and, and can, does, can and does occur. So if that is you, then you wanna stay away from that. Several of their products do contain methyl isothiazinolone, so be sure and check for that if you're somebody who is allergic to it. I think it's great. I think CC creams and tinted sunscreens like tinted, um, like the mineral powder, 
powders, they are frosting on the cake. They don't substitute for your sunscreen layer, but they they offer camouflaging and they offer um, targeted. Um, they offer they offer protection that you can target to dark spots against visible light. So I like them in that regard. All right, so moving along, probably my least favorite product here, and I'll explain as to why, is the, and it's a popular one, uh, they've got two kind of similar ones. One is uh, the Supergoop Millie Limited Edition Defense Refresh Setting Mist, and then the other one is, they've got another spray on here, uh, Defense Refresh Setting Mist. Um, so they've got one in a, one in a flowery, one in a bottle with stars on it. <laughs> Uh, sunscreen sprays are increasing in popularity. Probably in the last decade, sales of sunscreens have increased. And when you look at the actual sales of sunscreens, uh, fewer and fewer sunscreen creams and lotions are being sold, and more and more consumers are gravitating towards and purchasing and using sprays. This is concerning because sprays do not sprays like powders do not adequately um, really give a good layer. Studies have shown that when consumers spray on spray on sunscreens, they lose approximately 25% of the product into the air. Okay, it's, it's aerosolized. It doesn't actually go onto the skin. Okay, so it's kind of, it's not cost effective. <laughs> um, you know, you, you're, you're, you're giving sunscreen to the mosquito and not yourself. Okay, and so I think it's, it can be very misleading when you rely on sprays that you're getting a good coverage, you're getting a good layer. Okay, many times consumers will develop burns from uneven applications. I've seen that a fair amount. I've seen that in patients who come in with a, a burn after using spray-based sunscreens just because it does not add, it doesn't, it doesn't go on evenly. It doesn't go on with any predictability. If you're outdoors at the beach and it's windy, for example, it's, it's, you know, it's going all over the place. Very little of it actually winds up on your skin. So, Sprays in general concern me. The increasing sales of sprays concern me, knowing that because what I predict will happen 20, 30 years down the road, 20 or 30 years down the road is that with the increased usage of spray-based sunscreens, um, really what that tells me is that people aren't using sunscreen right. So we might see an increase in uh, UV-related skin cancers uh, and people using these and people using them will be, be like, well, sales of sunscreens went up and people using sunscreen went up, but skin cancers went up. Why is that? Do sunscreens cause skin cancer? And uh, you know, we'll be fighting this argument of, well, no, people started using the sprays that aren't really reliable and they were misled into thinking they could stay out in the sun longer. The other reason that I'm not a fan of this spray is that they put on, they put in peppermint and spearmint. Those are fragrances that have a cooling property. They offer, um, you know, sensory appeal to the consumer, but they really don't offer your skin any, any benefit. And in fact, they can be very, very irritating on your skin. If you're applying these and you go out in the sun, you know, sometimes they can, they can cause rashes in the sun, irritation. Um, they don't belong in sunscreen products. I don't like that they put that in there. You know, they're trying to make this, um, you know, desirable to the consumer. And so th this is probably one of my least favorite products. And it's expensive. It retails for, you know, 28 bucks for one ounce, or excuse me, 28 bucks for 3.4 fluid ounces. Um, it is a chemical sunscreen. So it's avabenzone, homosalate, octinoxate, and octisalate. You've got to reapply this. That's pretty expensive, and you're 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 giving it all to the mosquito more more than likely. So not a fan of that product, but then another product in the Supergoop line that I was not impressed with is their Everyday Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This is a chemical sunscreen again with Ava Benzone in it, uh, the UVA filter that uh, is not photostable, so really really requires reapplication, reapplication, reapplication. What I was initially impressed with is the fact that they offer this in a really, really large uh, size that has a nice handle on it so you can tote it to the beach and keep slapping it on your kids and your, you know, your family. I love the packaging on it, don't get me wrong. But what I detest about this is in the inactive ingredients, this is another product in which they put essential oils. They put so essential oils, citrus fruits, and citrus peels are really, really problematic in skincare, really, really problematic in uh, sunscreens because they can cause something called a phytophotodermatitis, which is a rash that happens when things are put on the skin and then exposed to ultraviolet light, namely sun. So they do not belong in a sunscreen. They're put in there as fragrance to make the product more appealing. Maybe they're processed in such a way that that is very low likelihood and that those 
those chemical compounds are filtered out, but you can't really guarantee that with any, you know, it's hard to guarantee that. So I don't know, this is not my favorite product. I wish they had left those out. There are far, far better uh, affordable chemical sunscreens for the body out there uh, that don't have these ingredients in them. And so I, I don't think that this one is worth it. Just go to the drugstore and buy a fragrance, a fragrance free, essential oil free, cheapy chemical sunscreen and uh, you know I can list some down below but this one is not offering anything but uh, you know I think they should I think they should reformulate the inactive ingredients in this one um, and it would be a better sunscreen. The other sunscreen product that also gives me pause and you know I would just give you some some tips about is the glow stick sunscreen. It is a stick based sunscreen that is 25 bucks, not too expensive. SPF 50, it's a chemical sunscreen. So again, the same, you know, filters that you can find in, in pretty much any sunscreen. So as far as an SPF, sun, SPF 50 chemical sunscreen, that is what it is. There's not a whole lot of changing it, but sticks, Sticks, sprays, powders, they all have the shortcoming of they don't offer the ability to get a good even layer on. It's really hard to, to get a stick all over your face. So consider this product as something that you would use uh, to just continuously touch up areas, areas that you keep keep touching and rubbing, like maybe maybe you know the sides of your face or something if you're scratching something and you need to reapply um and you know you don't want to keep reaching for the lotions and reapplying that um but don't rely on this as your base layer okay first of all it's like really hard this is like painting a wall with an eraser okay really hard to get a good layer on even though the stick that they have is pretty broad based um, for for a nice sweep, uh, it's still not it's still not likely to give you adequate coverage. The other problem with sticks is that people people do skip areas, okay? Particularly something like this that goes on that goes on clear and you can't really see so well where where you're getting it. Um, people don't you know people people have skip areas, all right? So it is not it is not uncommon for people to burn you when they rely exclusively on stick based sunscreens because they have so many skip areas. They come out looking they come out looking like they've been sitting in a deck chair or something um, and they've got burned between between the bands of the deck chair um, so so do know that not a substitute for your base layer if you like it though I can understand why and I think they they made a decent stick but sticks sticks don't sticks are not <laughs> don't just stick to the stick okay you, you need you need a base layer all right um, but as far as the stick goes this one seems to be okay they also have a mineral smooth and poreless matte sunscreen. I really like this one. It is um, a mineral sunscreen that is titanium dioxide and zinc zinc oxide, SPF 40, uh, fragrance free, and it has some very, very moisturizing ingredients that are pretty occlusive, okay? So this is one that if you find that, um, you know, sunscreens make you look uh, kind of greasy, oily, shiny, I think the matte, this particular matte vehicle, you might find that you like a bit. This one also has tint in it, so it's got iron oxides for, um, for UV, for, excuse me, it's got iron oxides in it for um, coverage into the visible wavelengths of light. Uh, kind of similar to, you know, the tinted sunscreens that I've used, like the Elta MD sunscreen. So for me personally, I will always rely, I will always go back to my Elta MD UV um, <clears throat> tinted sunscreen um, as my number one tinted sunscreen of choice. But this one seems pretty good um, and <clears throat> I would imagine that people would like it. Then their City Sunscreen Serum clocks in at $42. This is a great everyday face sunscreen that is um, very moisturizing. Uh, you know, serum is just a funny word that the cosmetic companies like to use. It can mean anything from a water-based lotion to an oil-based moisturizer. Um, it's hit or miss. But the City Sunscreen Serum looks to be a very moisturizing um, chemical sunscreen. Uh, to me, it's pretty pricey at $42. Bucks. Um, and I think there are, you know, more affordable options out there for a chemical sunscreen screen but if you love this vehicle and it's the only one that you are willing to reapply that and you're comfortable with the price point then I think it is worth it um, you know for me personally I have always found that the Neutrogena uh, sunscreens the Neutrogena clear face sunscreen uh, which is a chemical sunscreen uh, for me I've always found that that is a fantastic moisturizing everyday sunscreen um, they have a variety of other chemical sunscreens that I think they do a really great job with the vehicle on and I don't know that this city sunscreen serum SPF uh, 
was the SPF on this? SPF 30 offers anything over those necessarily. So it's really a matter of your personal preference as, as far as the vehicle. The vehicle here doesn't have anything that stands out to me as being problematic. So I think it's worth a try, but the price point to me just, it just doesn't justify it. And I would choose Neutrogena over, over that one. All right, next up they have the Healthy Glow Sunless Tan. You all always ask me what my thoughts are on sunless tanners. They are safe uh, and they um, you know, are definitely a lot safer than getting a natural tan. So um, you know, I, I always uh, would encourage you to choose those over, over tanning uh, by, by ultraviolet light for sure. Dihydroxyacetone is the compound that produces the browning effect. It's called the, um, it's called the Mayad reaction. Uh, you know, it's basically a little sugar that precipitates out with some of the proteins in the top layer of your skin. It makes a little browning, a browning crust, okay? I mean, for me personally, as a dermatologist, it, it kind of is not a good look for me to be rocking a tan, okay? It's like asking a pulmonologist to show up to the office uh, chewing on a candy cigarette, okay? Uh, uh, so, you know, I, it's not something that I, I want to promote as an ideal or, you know, that there's such a thing as a healthy tan because um, there's not. Uh, but I definitely condone using sunless tanning products for sure over, over UV light. If, if, you, if you have to have to have a glow or a bronze, that is the way to get it, not by light. Okay, so fantastic that they have it. They have it in a spray form. I don't know how well spray-based spray um, sunless tanning things apply personally. Um, I do know that, you know, you can go into a booth and have sunless tanner applied. Um, we don't know how safe it is to inhale dihydroxyacetone. So if you are using this as a sunless tanner to your face, for example, do not inhale, okay, <laughs> hold your breath. We simply don't know how safe it is to inhale dihydroxyacetone, all right? But on the skin, it is more than safe. Don't worry about it there, it is great. Um, it also offers a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of SPF. This product, in addition to the dihydroxyacetone, also has um, sunscreen in it, it's SPF 40. Um, so it, it's giving a little bit extra. It's a chemical sunscreen, so, you know, Knowing how people go about putting sunless tanners on, I don't really think the sunscreen in this is really doing anything. I mean, right? Don't people do, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I've seen a lot of YouTubers go over their sunless tanning routine, and it seems like they do it like the night before, and you know, they go to great lengths to get it on. I can't imagine that you just spray this on 20 minutes before you go outside into the sun. So I don't know that the sunscreen in there really offers anything, honestly. I think by the time you do your tanning routine with this, um, you know, you, you probably, you know, it's probably time to reapply sunscreen. That's probably already worn off as far as a sunscreen. And you're not reliably getting the SPF on there. So I wouldn't be misled into thinking that you're, you know, that you're getting extra sunscreen here. All right, and then a product I've been using and, and somewhat enjoying is their Shine On Lip Sunscreen. Um, I really actually do like this quite a bit. It um, is a clear lip gloss that is a chemical sunscreen. It's very moisturizing. Um, I really didn't don't care for the applicator that much. My mom likes it. Um, I, these are not my preference, but this is a great, this is like a lip gloss, okay? You know, if you wear a lipstick and you want a, a gloss on over it, it is really good in that manner. Um, it's very moisturizing, not irritating, and I really like it. Later on this year, I plan to do a, you know, lip SPF review. Again, you guys seem to like that. I've got a lot of new lip SPFs uh, that I've been trying out, so this will probably make an appearance there. The other product that I have been using and really liking from their line is this mineral um, eye cream. You know, I say eye creams are gimmicky. You don't you don't need a separate cream for your eyes as your face. Um, but I've been trying this out. It is a chemical sunscreen SPF 37. They also have a tinted one of these, similar to the Color Science one that I use. Um, that uh, both of them come. Um, just like the Color Science one that I use, both of them come with kind of an under eye metal applicator thing that is cooling, so nice to apply. Um, I like this, my mom likes it a lot, it goes on really well. It's good for touching up a little bit of sunscreen here and there under the eyes on the go, um, but I don't think it offers a whole lot extra in comparison to any other just mineral sunscreen. This is nice though because it's got oat peptides in it, and you know, oat peptides can be very good humectants and things, so this is really moisturizing, which is important in a sunscreen. A lot of people find that mineral-based sunscreens kind of are drying and cakey. I think you will find that this one 
makes the skin look nice and hydrated and supple by virtue of that. And the last product that I'll review for you that I have tried before, um, and on application I like, but in seeing the ingredient list, I have, I, I, it gives me pause, is the um, Forever Young Hand Cream. This is an SPF 40 chemical sunscreen that is designed to uh, go on for the hands. It's very moisturizing. I've tried it, I liked it. It has sea buckthorn, which is a great emollient, um, and is a lot of moisturizers. However, I like, like the body sunscreen, they went ahead and put those citrus essential oils in here, so don't love that. Um, not only can that be problematic in a sunscreen, but for people with dry, cracked, eczema-prone hands, fragrance and essential oils in lotions and, and creams for the hands can really, really be problematic when the skin barrier is dry, parched, irritated, and inflamed. You're really, really susceptible to irritation by those ingredients, so not good. It also has fragrance, uh, straight up fragrance in it. It's got limonene in it. Um, so this is not this is not one of their best products, although personally as a consumer when I tried it, I liked it. It comes in a convenient pump. Um, so I really wish they would reformulate that one and the body one to exclude those sunscreen, those um, um, those uh, fragrancy ingredients. But yeah, overall, you cannot rely on sunscreen alone. Sprays, powders, sticks, they do not reliably distribute SPF. You still need a broad base layer with lotions or creams. Um, but the value in a sunscreen is all in how much you like it and are willing to reapply it, reapply it, that is key. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.